muted. We get this recording, and with that, we'll go ahead and get things started. We appreciate you joining us today. This is Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center, and we have Stephen Hale from Technical Services who is going to be presenting to you on the new upcoming exciting changes that are going to be made to the TIM system. Stephen, are you on? I am. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Sure can. Great. Thanks, Victoria. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, like Victoria said, my name is Steve Hale. I'm, uh, I work here at uh, Central Office in Tech Services, and I, I deal with the TIM system. So today's going to be a little different. Normally, we show you how to use TIMS. Um, this webinar is going to be more focused on some, some application changes that are coming down the line. Um, we're currently under contract with a developer um, who actually built TIMS to make some application enhancements. So today we kind of wanted to just show off um, a demo application of, of what changes are coming and hopefully get some feedback from everybody and, and the users out there um, who are actually using the system too. So throughout this whole presentation, if you have any questions or concerns or even ideas for future enhancements on TIMS of uh, how we can make the site better to help you uh, get your work done, uh, let me know. Feel free to, to type it, as Victoria said, in the chat, or um, I guess we're going to open it up to, to questions via the microphone at the end. Uh, so I guess to start off, I just want to jump into the actual TIMS application first. So this is uh, what you would see now if you went to TIMS, and you may notice that there's a notification um, relating to some data issues in TIMS. Um, Steve, I wanted to quick go ahead. I'm not seeing the screen share on here. Oh. Did you push that button again? I just did. Okay, hopefully okay. I'll see it. All right, see I'm now? seeing it on the screen, absolutely. If anyone else isn't, please let us know, but hopefully you're seeing the Tim's webinar slash LTAP on your screen. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Victoria. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just going to jump into the Tim's application real quick and, and show you, you, if you've used the site in the last couple weeks, you might notice this notification um, regarding some, some issue that, or some data issues that um, relate to the log points and the LRS system. Um, just wanted to, to update everybody on what's going on. Is we have a um, an update process that updates our LRS, our linear referencing system, that we uh, we update that data annually. And there was an issue this year that caused some of the the log point measurements or the mileposts essentially to to shift slightly for some routes. Um, if you're concerned about the data that you're using, you can click on this new section and see all the data sets that may or may not be affected, and then the counties in which we saw these issues. Um, if you have more questions, please feel free to uh, ask me at the end, or from the TIMS application, there is a contact button, and you can drop us an email and, and get further clarification if you'd like. So with that, I'm going to jump into the new development site. And I'm actually going to share this URL with everybody real quick in the chat. And please feel free, probably not while I'm doing the demo, but please feel free after this to, to jump into the site and play around with it a little bit and, and let us know what feedback you might have. Um, again, a good way to, to get to us would be through that contact uh, email at the bottom of the site. Okay, so what are some of the changes that uh, are coming down the line in TIMS? First of all, um, the changes that I'm going to show you today, you can expect to see in the application probably around April-ish, we're hoping. So we're still working on it. We're still writing code. We're still developing the application. Um, and once that's done, we need to get that deployed here and in, into our environment and, and test it out, make sure all the bugs are fixed and everything works as expected. And so. After all that testing is done, we're thinking around maybe late March, early April-ish. Um, so just keep your eye out in the spring, and we will be sending out emails uh, to Tim's users to let you know when these are going to take place. Um, but some of the, the items that are going to change is uh, you might notice right away we have a new crash data search button. So I don't know how many of you out there are currently GCAT users, which is the GIS crash um, mapping tool, but if you are a GCAT user, um, in the near future you will be coming to TIMS to actually 
handle the mapping portion of the GCAT system. So you'll be able to come to TIMS, you'll be able to query crash data and view it in a map and export it directly from TIMS. Um, so I will demo uh, some of that functionality in a minute. We have some changes, some pretty big changes to, to create a map page in which we completely redesign the page. Um, and some of the tools are new within the create a map too. So we'll go over some of that. And then there are a couple small changes to the project search as well as the data glossary. So with that said, I'm just going to jump into the create a map page to show you the, the big changes here. So one thing that you might notice first is this, this toolbar or title bar up at the top changed slightly. So you can actually navigate through the web page via this title bar at the top. Now this has changed from the previous version of TIMS, um, but the functionality is, is all still there. So right away when we jump into create a map, you'll notice that no more scrolling up and down. So in the old version, I'm just going to go back to the old version. We have a window here for the map and a window here for the tools and then your results. And so this was a kind of a hassle to scroll up and down. So what we've done is we've kind of reorganized things. So we now have one large map that you're going to do all your visualizing and your analysis. And then we also have a, a drop down pane for your results to where you can view the table. And then all the layers and the tools are going to be accessed via this pane here on the left. And all of these are completely adjustable. You can click and drag. Or you can just minimize all together if you want to view a full page map. So this is probably the largest um, change that we have coming to TIMS. And I think we're going to get a lot of positive feedback. I hope we get a lot of positive feedback um, regarding this change. Another thing you might notice in Create a Map is the background base map is slightly different than what you're used to seeing. So we still have our adjustable base maps up here, up in the upper right hand corner. And this is probably more along the lines of what you're used to seeing when you use TIMS. Um, there's nothing wrong with these base maps, but we do not maintain them. So all of these, these base maps up here above the line are actually provided to us uh, via external companies. What that means is we don't have any, of the con any control of the data that goes into these base maps. And we were getting a little bit of uh, feedback regarding discrepancies between the base maps that are provided to us from other companies and ODOT's data. So what we did is we went ahead and started developing our own base map. And that's what you see here. So this is still a, a, a demo base map. It's not 100% complete, but you can get an idea of what it will look like in the application. So you do lo lose a little bit of the, the fine detail that you might get with one of these other out-of-the-box base maps. You can notice some of the labeling. Is, is, it's a lot prettier to look at. But we're not professional map makers, and, and I think we did a pretty good job developing this one. Um, but this will be available for you to use with the new version of TIMS. And so what this means is that now when you overlay, say, the road inventory or the functional class um, line network, it'll, it'll overlay exactly on top of the roads that you see in this base map, whereas some of these other base maps might be off slightly based on ODOT's data. I hope that makes sense. Um, so another thing with the base maps is the new application will actually remember your preference. So as long as you don't clear your cookies or your cache, next time you come into TIMS, whichever base map you had selected, it will automatically appear um, in, your, in your create a map page. So that's a functionality that I think a lot of people will, will be happy about. And uh, again, this is completely customizable because we're building it ourselves. So if you do have feedback regarding this map, um, again, let us know and, and hopefully we can accommodate that. All right, so let's get to some of the fun stuff. Um, over here in our, uh, I guess I'm going to call this the tool pane on the left hand side, is where you're going to come to access all your layers. Um, it's where you're going to come to do your querying. I see I have a message real quick. Um, 
looks like it's private. Victoria, are the messages set to private or? Um, you know what, it's a, similar to the message we received earlier. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, okay. Perfect. Let me know if I get if I get an yeah. actual question. Actually, you know what, you did. Let me see. I okay. um, you have a message from Lindsay. I don't see anything other than the gray screen. Is he currently accessing Tim's? Um, yeah, it, you should be seeing other than a gray screen, Lindsay. So that might have uh, been an earlier message, though. Is there anyone else that, that's having an issue? Um, okay, she refreshed it, and she's good now. Okay, Perfect. good. Perfect. Thanks. I guess if you missed any of that, Lindsay, you'll have to watch the recording. Okay, so over here on our left-hand side is the tool pane, um, where before it was below the map. So you used to have to access your tools and scroll up and down to turn layers off, um, on and off. But now, and I just want to tell you that we have more layers in the actual application, but this is just the development version. So we only have a few different layers here. Um, but now in the, in the left-hand side of the map, without having to scroll, you can access all your layers here and turn them on and off as needed. So it's a little better functionality and it saves you from having to scroll up and down, um, zo accidentally zoom in or out on the map what, when you're scrolling. Um, but you can come, you can turn on certain layers and actually toggle between the layers and the legend. So now if you have all the layers that you want to turn on, you can just come over here to the legend and see all your layers and interact with the map all at the same time. Now another item that was um, heavily, I don't want to say criticized, but we got a lot of feedback was trying to get information out of TIMS quickly and easily. So we do have the querying tools, we have the, the filtering tools, um, but especially a lot of GIS users just want the ability to click on the data and see and like an info pop-up to see some quick attributes of the data. So what we've done is actually modified the identify tool up here. You actually, you still have to click on it to identify it. I'm going to zoom out just a tad to get those labels off. So once you click on that identify tool, you don't have to do any more configuration at this point. You just click on the, the features that you want to identify and it's going to, it's going to pick up all the layers that are visible in the map. So if I have two layers turned on, it's going to select from all, all the layers. Or if I have 10 layers turned on, it's going to select from all 10 of those. So once I have, have something selected, I can then drop down and see which layers I actually did select from. So I have two layers active right now, and I actually got a return in both layers. So I can toggle between the layers that I actually was interested in and then now I can see that in my traffic AADT layer, I have 14 records selected. So now I can, I can toggle through those. And you'll notice when I zoom in that as I toggle, the selected record is actually highlighted there. And I can see the attributes very easily in the left-hand pane. Alternatively, I can switch layers very quickly and toggle between those layers too. Now, you, if you're zoomed way, way out in the map, you can actually zoom to all the selected records or you can zoom to just the ones you have highlighted. And you can actually remove that graphic as well, too, if that, if that gets a little annoying. And that graphic was the, the boundaries that selected um, the data in your map. So hopefully this is a useful uh, functionality that's new and coming. I'll show you. Let me turn on a few more layers and show you. So I'm just going to turn on a couple other boundary layers. And so now if I click on the map, it's going to select from all those layers. Oh, let me click on uh, some other points too. Uh -oh. hmm. That might be a bug. 
Okay, so I'm going to mark that as our first bug in the new environment. But you, I think you get the idea. Um, it's, a, it's an easy way to not have to configure the tool first. You can just go straight to the map, turn on the, the only layer that you're interested in, and click on it and, and get that data pretty quickly. So some of the other uh, items here in Create a Map. The, this measure tool. We remove the, uh, the find the lat long measurement from this tool and we've actually made an upgrade under the find locations lat long. So this is, if you do need to find locations, this is where you're going to come to find your, your latitude and longitude. Um, and now you can, you can click on the map, extract that and actually convert between decimal degrees and degrees, minutes, seconds. Now if you have a, a latitude, longitude in uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, you can type that in and click find um, and it'll zoom to that location and you can still convert between the two. So with that, I mean, most of the functionality that you're used to in TIMS is still available. It's just reorganized here in the left hand side to fit the new layout. And we think it's going to be very nice to be able to access these tools without having to scroll up and down, get out of the map, you know what I mean? So hopefully this is useful and if you do have feedback or, or ideas or questions, uh, please let us know. And we might even be able to accommodate that with this round of development, but if not, then we can certainly add it to uh, the backlog of development for uh, the, the new TIMS. All right, so I'm going to come back to the home page here. And as I mentioned before, there's a crash data search. So if you are a GCAT user, um, you'll have a username and password to log into the, the crash data search. If you're not currently a GCAT user and you click this page, you'll be directed to this um, I guess welcome page to say, are you an existing user? If so, you can log in. If not, then you can um, sign up to request an account. But if you are already logged in, so I'm just going to log in down here at the bottom. If you are already logged in and you click this crash data search, it's going to bring you right to a brand new page in Tim's um, called the crash data search page. So this is kind of a mashup between what we currently have in like the project search page and what is currently offered in the GCAT system. Um, so with the new GCAT mapping tool, you'll be able to come here, select um, some criteria on what type of crash records you want to either view in the map or download. So you can select when, uh, when the crash has occurred and you will have more dates to choose from. This again is just a development database. You can select months, you can select one, or you can select many months. And then you get into the crash details, like what types of crashes are you interested in finding? Do you want train crashes or um, pedocycles? Pedal cycles, oh, okay. Animal crashes. Um, what kind of severity do you want? Injury crashes or property damage or fatal crashes? Um, if you have a document number search, you can enter that in. Some emphasis areas, I guess. You can uh, toggle one or many of these. And this is probably outside of your workflow. I don't know that you'll, you'll be using this many criteria, but I just wanted to demonstrate all the different options you have here to search the crash database. And then you can actually look by location too. So you can um, select what type of intersection and it will add that to your, your, your query. You can search the, the city or the township or even county, I believe. I don't know what a lot of these. Here we go. And then if you, if you have an NLF ID, if you have a precise um, location on our LRS, on our, on our network that you want to find lo crash locations for, you can add that here. Um, this one isn't quite working yet but you'll be able to add uh, a county route and a section to your analysis. And then once you have all this filled out, you can click view and map and it'll take you to the create a map page where you can view 
the, uh, the crash records, or you can actually just download that data. And I believe it's going to download in a CSV. Um, these buttons aren't functional yet. This is just kind of a mock-up to show you what it's going to look like. And then once you do view the data in the map, um, once the, the data is live in production, you'll have a couple other new tools in Create a Map that will allow you to um, dig deeper into the crashes and, and further analyze those crashes. So hopefully that's something uh, useful again and um, look forward to getting those crashes in there in production. Okay, now I'm going to navigate to the project search page. This one tends to take a second to load, um, but while it's loading, I just want to give you an overview of some of the changes we've made here. Um, so the way, the problem, I guess, the challenge with the, the project search is the way ODOT maintains their projects in the project database, um, there's a single county and district of record for that project. So for example, if there's a project that crosses county boundaries, um, it might have work locations in two different counties, but for administrative purposes, that project is only recorded via one county and district. Um, this was how Tim's always queried the county. So anytime you queried, or I'm sorry, the projects, anytime you filtered by county or district, you are actually getting the county and the district of the recorded Ellis location and not where the work was actually being performed. So this was causing quite a bit of confusion when people wanted to see all the projects that were actually where the work was actually being done in a certain county or a certain district. So what we've done here is we've added the ability to choose which type of uh, county or district you want to query on. Um, I believe mine is currently defaulted to work location. I think it will default to whatever your uh, preference is. So whatever the last type you use to query or filter, the next time you come into this page, it will uh, remember that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's the same functionality. You can select your, your district and your county, and it filters the table down here. You can reset, and you still have all the same filters that you used to have. Now you just have to decide, do you want the recorded location or the work location? And I, I, I would bet that most people want the work location, but because this recorded location is does serve a purpose, we wanted to keep that option available to you. So now if I wanted to uh, go to the project details page, you'll see that new information here. You have your work location, but you also have your uh, primary PID location as well. So this one happens to match. It's all taking place in Franklin County. Um, but there are instances where the recorded location is different than the work location. Additionally, let me find a better example here. All right, resurfacing. Let's see if this one has that information. It does not. We have some additional information in here. Um, if a certain work location is associated with a pavement treatment or a pavement, uh, if it's, I guess, re, um, I wanted to say resurfacing, but this one's a resurfacing and it doesn't have that information. But there are work activities that have treatment types associated with them. And we do have that um, information available in the database now. So if there is a work location that has a pavement treatment type, um, you can see that in the, the information page. I wanted to find one. I, I guess I should have planned ahead. Let's try this one. Here we go. So this one is a minor rehabilitation. Um, and you just have AC overlays and repairs. So if you're interested in this type of information, um, when you're querying the Ellis page, you now have it available here in uh, the project information page. So one other item that's new to this project information page, um, we have the view and map still, but we also have the view and Ellis button. 
When you click the View and Ellis button, it brings you to what they call the Ellis Proj page. page. So if, unless you're an ODOT employee or um, have special access to the Ellis database, you probably don't have access to get to Ellis. Um, so this is a public-facing page that kind of gives you a, a high-level summary of uh, the information that we store in our, in our Ellis, our project database. So you can come in here and you can view um, estimates on costs. You can view um, construction contracts, scheduled data, um, some bridge information. So there's a lot more data here uh, relating to the project than we can actually show in TIMS. So we thought this was a useful page to link to. All right. So that is about it for the uh, project search. And one more item here under the data glossary page is we are actually working to um, enhance our data glossary but we also added two new items to the data glossary page that show a date refreshed and an update cycle. So the date refreshed is the last time that that data in TIMS was actually updated. Um, the update cycle, we have different update cycles for every data set in TIMS. Some data is updated nightly some data is updated um, weekly, or some data we just update as needed. As we get information from uh, the business or the people that maintain the data, they might give us data every month or every other month. Some, some data we do update as needed. So that information on a data set by data set basis will be available here in your uh, data glossary. So here you can see the bridge data is updated daily. And don't be alarmed, this is an old uh, copy of the database, so it's showing it was last updated um, almost a year ago. We actually do update that daily. So, With that, are there any questions? You can feel free to unmute your phone line by clicking in front of the microphone and on, in front of your name on the GoToMeeting webinar page or I could just unmute everybody as long as everybody promises not to talk over each other. I'll just unmute everybody real quick. So everybody's unmuted. Anyone that has a question can feel free to pose it. Again, um, I, I went ahead, for those of you that came late, I went ahead and copied the URL up here to the, the meeting chat room and the developers are okay with you getting in there to, uh, to play around. We just would like to get as much feedback as possible while we're actually in there playing with things and, and um, redesigning, I guess. So is there is a question. question. Go ahead. Will you be able to draw a boundary around the area in TIMS to get crash data for that area? Yes, Jared. There, there's a new tool um, that once you go through that process, once you go through this process of selecting the criteria for your crashes, so the challenge is, I guess, there's just millions of records that we need to filter through. So once you filter this down to a more acceptable um, number of records that we can view on the map, you'll then have an option to zoom into an intersection or a location and draw, draw a boundary around that to extract um, maybe crashes at a certain intersection. And that, I believe, is an added tool to uh, the, the crash search page. Now, I don't have that to demo today, unfortunately, because they're still working on it. Yep, you'll also be able to search a date range. So you can search when occurred. You'll have the option to, to select more years here once we go live in production. And then you can s select the months, too. And there was yeah. a, a question about posting a link to the change group. Paste. Is that what you were looking for, Stephanie? I hope so. Cool. Uh, the months for each year, do those months apply to all years? Um, that is a good question, Jared. Um, I don't have the answer to that. 
I'm assuming that it's an or or an and statement. So when you select a year, you're saying select from 2012, 13, and 14, and also select these months. So you are you are filtering from each one of those years, um, each one of the months that you also select. So I don't know if that's very clear, but I think you you do have that ability to filter. Um, when that is rolled out, I believe Derek and his group, um, who maintain the GCAT system, they will be doing um, trainings on how to use the new system. So you'll you'll be informed either way. How can I look at soil borings record records? So I believe we don't have that information in the development site, um, but I believe you're referring to. Where is that information? The borehole locations under assets. So this is our current application. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Um, who who asked the question? But here in, in create a map under assets, we have borehole locations. Once you zoom in on the map, those locations will show up. Stephen, I, my screen must have froze up. Is anyone else able to see what Stephen's looking at? Nope, can't see anything. Okay. Are you there, Stephen? Well, that might be why we couldn't see it. I think we just lost him completely. Let's give him a second to get back in if he has um, been disconnected for some reason. Sorry about that, folks. Stephen, are you back on? Well, we'll definitely get an answer to that question for you. Um, and we'll go ahead and, and also get answers to any other questions you have, such as the one that Stephanie just posted um, about the bridges um, being a possibly a layer in the demo version. So with that, if you have any additional questions, you'd like to go ahead and put them in the chat pod, I'll talk to Stephen and get those answers for you. And we'll send that out with a recording of this webinar. Um, in addition to the link, once again, for the test demo site. So sorry about that. Sometimes technology works great, and other times it doesn't work quite as great as you want it to. But we do appreciate you joining for um, the webinar today. And I'll stay on here for a few minutes. If you have additional questions, please feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat pod. But um, I don't believe we have Stephen back on yet, so we'll go ahead and wrap the, the webinar up now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 